Welcome to the Interactive Motion Course. The first project of the new season is a faux 3D octopus. In the upcoming lessons, we'll create a complex interactive character and learn how to combine various techniques. In this video, we'll focus on the first step, setting up the basic semisphere. Let's get started. Open Rive Browser and create a new file. Let's create standard artboard with size 500 by 500. Name it Octopus. Press F and zoom the artboard to fit. Let's keep the origin of the artboard in the center. For this, let's set origin to 50% by 50%. Also, let's tweak the background color. We prepared a project, so let's move on to the first step and build a hemisphere design. Let's start by creating a cut side of a hemisphere. Select the Ellipse tool. Press Shift plus left mouse key to create a symmetrical ellipse. Move to the Alignment tools and center the ellipse within the artboard. Set the ellipse size to 200 by 200. Change the color to rose. Select the ellipse and go to the Properties panel. If you adjust the scale Y, you will see a change in the plane's perspective, giving us a feeling of volume. Set the scale Y to 25% for the cut side. Rename the ellipse. Now let's create the inner part of the hemisphere slice. Duplicate the cutout and rename it to cut in. Change the fill color to a darker shade. Set the size to 100 by 100. Let's create the face of the hemisphere. Duplicate the cutout. Rename it. Change the scale Y to 100. Change the fill color. Now let's modify the shape of the ellipse so that it wraps around the slice. Select the face. Go to Edit Path Mode by pressing the Enter. Adjust the shape following the video. For more precise adjustments, extend the bezier handle of the central point. You'll notice that when pulling one handle, the other doesn't move. Since our shape is symmetrical, we need mirror mode. Go to the panel and switch to mirror mode. Now the face shape clearly fits the cut shape. Editing is done. Let's move to the next step. In this step, we will set up the hemisphere rig and create a timeline to control the figure's volume. Let's start with rigging. Select the bone tool. Create a bone and press escape to finish editing. Add the bone to a group for additional control. Rename the objects. Select the group and move the anchor point to the base of the bone. Change the group type. Move the group to the base of the cut sphere. Next, create a second controller. Duplicate group 1. Move it to the base of the hemisphere. Rename the duplicate. Now let's link the design layers and controllers. 
For this, additionally group cut in and cut out. Add a scale constraint to the group. Select Control Cut as the target. If we adjust the controller scale, we can see the cut responds correctly. Now let's set up the face of the hemisphere. Select the shape. Go into Edit Path Mode. Activate Bind Bones. Press Coral plus Shift and select both bones. Press Enter to finish binding. The top points need to be 100% parented to the top bone. Select the bottom points and handles. Set them to 100% parented to the control face. Editing is done. Let's check the results. Now, when we adjust the scale Y, we see that the top shape follows the cut, while the bottom stays still, creating a volume effect. Set the scale Y to 100. Next, we'll create a timeline that controls the depth of the hemisphere. Go into animation mode. Press F to zoom and fit. Open timeline 1. Rename it. Select the group with the cut. Add a keyframe for the scale Y value. Immediately set the value to 120 to visually expand the cut. Move to the 1 second mark and change the value to negative 120. Let's check the result. At the midpoint, the face shape should overlap the cut shape to create the volume effect. For this, move to the middle of the timeline. Animate the opacity of the cut group from 100 to 0. Select the keyframes and set toggle interpolation. The timeline is ready. In this step, we will create a target that follows the movement of the cursor. To achieve this, we'll first create a hitbox to track user actions. Select the Rectangle tool. Press Shift plus left mouse key to create a symmetrical rectangle. Set the size to 500 by 500, matching the artboard. Center it using the Alignment tool. We've created the shape within which we will track user actions. Reduce the opacity. Rename the layer. Now, let's create a group that will serve as the target linked to the cursor's movement. Select the Group tool and click on the artboard. Change the group type. Center it. Rename the group. Go into Animate mode and open the Listeners tab. Select Pointer Hitbox. Go back to Listeners and press Plus. You'll see a listener with the same name as the hitbox, filled with the selected target. Select the Actions tab and choose the pointer move. Press Alt and delete the standard property. Add a line target. Click on the target and select the pointer target. Play the state machine. Now we see incorrect results because the joy timeline is connected to the enter state by default. Let's delete it. Play the state machine again. Now we don't see any movement because the target is empty. If we add a shape to the target, 
we will see the target following the pointer movement. This is what we need. Let's delete the shape. Let's move on to the next step. In this step, we will link the timeline animation to the cursor movement using a joystick and set up additional sphere movement. First, let's set up the joystick. Select the joystick tool. Create a joystick by clicking on the artboard. Go to the Properties panel. Choose the Y menu. Select Joy Depth Y. Next, set up the position, size, and placement of the joystick. First, activate Draw in World Space. Set the height along Y equal to the height of the artboard. Move the joystick to the center of the right side of the artboard. Activate the Group tool by pressing G and create a new group. Change the group type. Move it to the center of the joystick. Rename the objects. Select Joy Depth Y. Activate Handle Source. Choose the created group as the handle. Now, adjusting the handle's position controls the joystick. To link the joystick animation to the cursor movement, add a translation constraint to the handle group. Enable Offset. Uncheck Copy X, as we only need the Y value. Click the target and select Pointer Target. Go into Animate Mode and test the functionality. We see that the hemisphere animation is linked to the cursor movement, but it moves in the opposite direction. To quickly fix this, select the joystick. Activate the inverted checkbox in the Y row. It works correctly now. Let's add some additional movement along all axes. Group the cut and face. Rename the group design. Next, group the controllers. Now group design and controls. Group again. Now we have the needed structure. Select the parallax layer. Add a translation constraint. Enable offset. Set the strength to negative 10 to move the hemisphere in the opposite direction of the cursor movement. Click the target and select pointer target. The hemisphere rig is set up. The first part of the lesson is successfully completed. Join our interactive motion course to access the full lesson and discover all the projects we'll be creating throughout the course. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated with the latest Rive tutorials.